Hey, shortwave listeners. If you've been listening to your radio recently, this sound is probably all too familiar over the last month. You know there are stations out there that are broadcasting all over the globe, but yet all you get is static and noise. Some might think the radio is broken or the antenna isn't working, and some will just give up saying there's nothing on shortwave to listen to. But fortunately, in many cases, this just can be propagation conditions due to varying space weather. And this was something I mentioned in my last video on the 41 and 38 meter scanning the bands video. So take a look at that. So in this particular video, I want to explore why space weather can disrupt even the best shortwave radios with great antennas. So first, let's just do a quick review on how HF shortwave propagation generally works. And I think most of you already know that these signals, shortwave signals, travel up to the ionosphere, which is filled with charged particles or ions created by solar radiation and high energy particles from the sun. Now, normally the ionosphere will refract those signals back down to earth, allowing them to be heard thousands of miles away. But it's really not that simple. You know, when the sun becomes more active, layers of the ionosphere can become more highly ionized, which in turn absorbs a broader range of shortwave frequencies. So now we have this weird conundrum, right? That solar activity causes the ionosphere to both reflect and absorb HF shortwave radio waves. And so how is that possible? But before I answer that question, I realized while I was editing this video that most of you may not be interested in all of the gory details about propagation and some of the physics behind it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give you a quick overview and then we're going to talk a little bit about some of the things you can do to try to get around this or things you can look at that help you understand what's the best time to use your shortwave radio. But if you're interested in the details, just continue on through this video and I'll have plenty of links down in the description to help you find more information. But for a quick synopsis, you can think of it this way. The sun is constantly emitting radiation. That radiation then affects the Earth's ionosphere. At the highest level, the ionosphere refracts the entire shortwave spectrum and your shortwave radio. And at the lower levels, the sun's ionization causes absorption of some of the shortwave frequencies. And I'll talk more about that later. So during midday and early afternoon, a lot of those frequencies under say seven megahertz are absorbed and you don't hear much on your shortwave. There are also some other components of solar activity that affect shortwave listening. One is solar flares, which is a burst of energy towards Earth, causing more ionization. Another one is a geomagnetic storm, which basically compresses the Earth's magnetic field, allowing more particles to come into the uh, magnetic field lines of the Earth. That affects propagation as well. So all these factors from daytime and or solar flares and solar activity basically affect your listening. And in certain instances, it will be a complete blackout. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you might have been experiencing periods of no signal receptions or very little signal receptions, especially this summer where we've had a lot of solar flares, we've had geomagnetic storms, these bursts of energy that hit the earth basically have been causing these general blackouts and or very short period blackouts. So let's cut to the chase. What are some of the things you can do to help mitigate these kinds of conditions? And the first thing I'm gonna recommend is not a propagation issue. It's more about getting your shortwave in an efficient and noise-free environment. So number one, get your antenna outdoors and get it into a noise-free environment. And that means anything you can put outdoors, and I have a video on this, I'll, I'll put a link down below. Uh, anything you can get outdoors will help. A wire, throw a wire out the window, put a wire up on the roof, anything you can do. If you can't, maybe get a loop antenna or wrap a wire around the top of your room, anything that will extend your antenna. And number two, reduce that noise level within your environment. Sometimes I will just unplug everything, especially monitors and laptops. Those cause a lot of noise. If you reduce the noise and you improve the gain with the antenna, that's a good starting point. It won't help necessarily with blackouts, but that's a good baseline to start with. So once you have that baseline set up, the first thing you can do with propagation is just go out on the web and look at web SDRs. 
and these shortwave receivers around the world, find one near you and take a look at the entire shortwave spectrum from 1 to 30 megahertz and see where propagation is poor and where propagation is good. So this should be similar to your location. Obviously, it depends on their setup and their antenna, but this at least gives you an idea of where are the blackouts, uh, where are good areas of the spectrum to take a look at. And you can clearly see in this example near me, the spectrum anywhere below about 6 megahertz is basically poor. And everything above basically 20 megahertz is pretty poor as well right now. So the next thing you can check for propagation, especially during the daytime, is to go out to the Space Weather Prediction Center. And on, on that site, there is a radio communications dashboard. And that dashboard will show the D region absorption. If you remember earlier, I mentioned that the D region will absorb lower frequencies during the daytime. And this map actually shows the cutoff where the lower frequencies are being affected by the solar radiation or the sun, sun's activity. And the more intense that color is on the screen, if it moves from purple up to blue, green, red, it means there's more absorption at higher, higher frequencies. And in really bad solar storms or solar events, that can actually go up to 15, 20, 25 megahertz for a complete blackout. So if you see that, then you know that the band is most likely, the shortwave bands are most likely completely closed. So in the daytime, just make sure to check the map Find your position on the map, and if you're in that colored area, then you're going to know that those frequencies are most likely going to be attenuated and closed. The next thing you can do is try to check to see if there are any geomagnetic storms going on. If you go back to the homepage of that Space Weather Prediction Center, they will give you some indications of major solar flare events and or geo, geomagnetic storms. And one of the indices they use to measure that is known as the K index or the KP index. And that index basically is telling you the activity in the geomagnetic field that is being affected by solar conditions. And if that KP index is 5 or greater, then the ionosphere is being affected and HF propagation and your shortwave signals are being affected significantly. So that would be a confirmation if you went to check a web SDR and you saw nothing on the web SDR and you looked at the K index and it was very high. So that's going to be an indication of a geomagnetic event and the bands will probably be closed under the, some of those circumstances. So those previous examples were longer term propagation effects that might affect your listening. Sometimes there are short term blackouts and these can be caused by X-ray flux on the day side of the earth. So if there's a solar flare and there's a strong X-ray flux coming in, it will ionize that D layer temporarily um, anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes. So you might see a blackout and hear nothing. And then literally within 15, 20 minutes, it'll slowly come back and the conditions will be good again. So you can look on again that Space Weather Prediction Center site and take a look at the X-ray flux and get an understanding if there was an event and what just you can actually watch it you can see that x-ray flux go up and down and conditions will drop back to normal again now i've talked a lot about lower frequencies and delayer absorption of those lower frequencies but there is a condition where higher frequencies get enhanced by solar radiation and one of the layers i didn't mention in the in the ionosphere is called the e layer and the e layer is somewhat mysterious um, for propagation they call it sporadic e but when that layer gets ionized, what can happen is higher frequencies get refracted and you can get long distance propagation on higher frequencies. So typically the range of about 25 to 30 megahertz, uh, the sporadic E layer will be able to enhance long distance signals. And you'll start hearing signals if you have a single sideband receiver, uh, you'll be able to hear things maybe from other countries that are using uh, free banders or uh, up even higher in the FM range up on 29 megahertz you'll hear signals and many times the sporadic E layer outside the shortwave spectrum will enhance those frequencies so if you have an FM radio in the FM frequency 88 to 108 megahertz those will be enhanced and sometimes you can get long distance DX on those on those frequencies if the E layer is highly highly ionized Take a look at my 11 meter scanning the bands video and you'll see a condition there where the higher frequencies are very active when I made that video. So one thing you can do to check on this is to go to the website called DX Maps 
And on that site, they have a sporadic E maximum usable frequency map. And, and in this example, you can see here in Europe right now that the sporadic E and the maximum usable frequency is very, very high. In fact, you see one there, 140, looks like 142 or 143 megahertz, 99, 109 megahertz. That means frequencies up to that range are usable and you're gonna be receiving signals in that frequency range. So for shortwave listeners, 25 to 30 megahertz is gonna be very good in this region. So you can use this map, find your location and see if there's any sporadic E and some basically giving you some higher frequencies so you can listen, listen on the high ends of the bands. Now, another interesting thing you can do is go out to the Whisper Rocks website. Whisper is a weak signal reporting system, and there are thousands of transmitters and receivers around the world transmitting across various frequencies all, all during the day and night, and they collect that information and signal strength, and you get a sense of how conditions are at different frequencies and over time. So you can see here, here's a worldwide view of basically the month of June 2025 and what propagation was like across that 30 days. You can see peaks and valleys, etc. So that gives you a sense of the trending of across those frequencies of what's happening. Another thing you do in the top menu is you can pick location. So I could pick America, for example, as location one. And I want to say, look at my propagation to China. And you can see here, you'll get another graph of what the propagation conditions were like. Now, the height of the uh, actual chart does not is not the strength of the signal. It's just the, the counts, the number of counts. There are not many signal receivers in China, but uh, you get you get the idea is that you can you can pick locations. But at least the world overview gives you a good sense that are things trending up, trending down, etc. And then for one last fun challenge, you can try to listen to the International Beacon Project, and that project basically has beacons around the world that transmit on 14.1, 18.11, 21.15, 24.93, and 28.2 megahertz. And they broadcast every 10 seconds and it rotates around the world. So basically you try to listen to the beacons as they rotate around and see which ones you can hear. Let's listen to an example. Here's a couple of them. So in that example, you were hearing two beacons, one up in northern Canada, VE8AT, and the other one, KH6RS in Hawaii, uh, both broadcasting on 18.11 megahertz. So these CW beacons are a challenge if you have a single sideband shortwave. Uh, put it on those frequencies and see what you can pick up. So that wraps up some of the ways you can approach poor propagation in shortwave when you're having either blackouts, you're hearing static, and some of the approaches to look for different bands or frequencies that might be more active when you think they're not. So I hope you found that informative. Now, if you're more interested in some of the actual science behind the ionosphere and propagation, I've put plenty of links down below that you can use to uh, read up on this. There's, there's lots of great information. There's YouTube videos, other YouTube videos on these topics, but you can pick specific areas of interest and start looking at those. So I hope those help as well. That's it. I hope you found the video inf informative. I appreciate all the subscribers. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. It doesn't, doesn't mean anything. It doesn't cost you anything. And it helps the channel a lot. I am working on another Scanning the Bands video that um, probably come out in a few weeks. And uh, we'll keep working on that. And I also have some other videos planned on other topics. So keep listening to Shortwave. Thanks for watching.